This chapter is all about creating a contact form. So in many, many use cases, many, many industries, you want to have a place where people can contact you to send you information, either feedback, inquiries, anything like that. So in this clip specifically, I'm going to show you how to use the user input to create one part of many in creating an effective contact form. So let's use the contact block that I've already created in this bot. Let's create a new group again, just for organization's sake. And let's drag this down to the contact group. Great. So now that we're here, again, we know this is accessible from the welcome message, the first thing that people will see when they access the bot. So let's create a user input plugin. So this works as such. What happens is people will see this message. Again, this is the message to the user. And then that message, that input that they put into the bot, the message they send gets saved as a certain attribute. And then eventually we can export those attributes either via email, through a mailing service like MailChimp or to Google Sheets, which is an online spreadsheet system. So here's what we'll do. Let's say that we want this to be a catering form. I know I have a catering block, but let's forget about that for the meantime and focus on this being a contact form for catering, okay? So what's the first message that we want to display when a user gets here? Let's say, what, what date are you interested in getting catering on? So what, let's simplify that. What date is your event? So we can add that. And for the validation, there are different things. So if we're asking for a phone number, if we're asking for an email or just a number, which I'll show you in a second. So next, let's say, what is your email? And here we'll do an email validation. So this means that if a user tries to enter something that isn't an email, they'll get an error message. And specifically, if we want to customize more, we can actually edit that error message down here. So it, the current message, if somebody, if they're asking for the email, if the bot asks somebody for an email and say they just enter a number like their phone number, what we can do is output an error message saying, please try again, that's not an email. So that's essentially what this default does, but we could change the message if we so choose for more flexibility. So let's move down the list, ask a few more questions. So what date is your event? What is your email? And let's just ask two more questions. How many people are attending? And then what is your phone number? Obviously these aren't in ideal order, but just for demonstrational purposes, this is what we're working with. And of course you see all these errors over here because we haven't set up user attributes. But before we do that, let's do some more validation. So how many people are attending? Let's do a number validation. Though keep in mind, people can enter a text version. So they could type out the number 10 instead of entering the numbers one zero. So let's, for the time being, just to be safe, say none, because people can still have a valid input even if they don't enter the number itself. For an email though, that's not the case. And for phone number, let's enter that. And don't worry, this works if they enter dashes, if they enter parentheses, all that. As long as they enter the 10 numbers that comprise a phone number, then they're good to go. So what's next? Let's assign attributes where this data will be stored for each user. So for the date, let's make it super simple. Let's just type in date. For email, let's type in email. And by the way, this seems simple, just assigning these basic attributes, but say you have a bot with multiple contact forms for different types of things, it's important to specify. So if you have a contact form for catering and one for feedback, I would suggest doing something like feedback underscore date for one form, and then for the other one, you could use catering underscore date, just to differentiate those for easy management later on. But for the time being, since this is a simple form, we're just going to go with the words themselves. For next, let's do attendees. And last, we'll just do phone. Perfect. So all of this checks out. Great. We have our user input all set up and ready to go for the next step.